Hi, I'm Minotaur. I've spent enough time in Siege to generally know what I'm doing. I understand that while some things can't always be taught, others can. I tend to notice that some people really struggle with attack and have issues with watching angles until hell freezes over. I thought I'd do my part to help fix some of these issues. Picking an operator is where we're going to start as it's rather simple. I can't teach you every operator and where to use them here, but I can tell you what a team generally needs. Firstly, you're going to want a hard breacher. A hard breacher on your team will allow you to reshape the map to your advantage, which can be huge. We are also going to want an operator for flank watch, meaning that it will have a mechanic to stop people from getting a free flank on us while we're doing whatever we'll be doing later in the round. Next, we're going to want an entry or two. This means an operator that will help us take ground and get to where we need to be. The operator will have their gun up a lot of the time, only putting it away for very brief moments. Our last slot is going to be flex, which is essentially a spare. Any of the previous roles can be slotted in here as well as a spare, as well as some other operators that don't exactly fit any of those other niches, like a Thatcher or Capitao. The main thing that separates Siege is the variety of gadgets and utility, both in a more traditional sense like you'd see in other games like Valorant, but also in conjunction with reshaping the map that is rather unique to Siege. Contrary to how a lot of bigger content creators use the drone, how you use your drone can depend on how new you are. If you're very new, I focus on just looking for the bomb and just learning the map, like the location of staircases. As you gain more experience, the next phase of droning is having a drone be useful throughout the round. Instead of scanning people and getting your drone destroyed, leave it to use as a camera that you can use later in the match to track enemy movements, both in sight for late in the round and near an entrance to ensure a safe entry can be very useful. If you are very new, this will hopefully make a bit more sense as we go through the video as there is an example or two down the road. Before we exit the drone phase, you should review your operators to make any adjustments as needed. If you have an operator for vertical play and they're on the top floor for example, something else would probably be better. We now need to discuss approaching the building. More experienced players of Siege know about spawn peeking, but newer players might not so let's briefly go over it. The tutorial would have you believe you just walk up to the building, but in actuality, there's commonly a dude trying to dome you the second you leave spawn. They just peek out a window at spawn, and when players run around the corner, they die. It's a bit annoying at first, but you will get used to it. Speaking of which, this segment of video is to help you get used to it. You may notice that you have quite a bit of extra ammo. Don't worry, you aren't going to be using all of it. When approaching the building, don't sprint until you know it's clear. Look at windows and doors. If it looks abnormal, I want you to fire a couple shots through it. Best case you kill someone, worst case you lost 5 bullets you aren't even going to need later. Once the coast is clear, you can proceed with the next step, entry. Entering very much depends on the enemies you'll be facing. When you're in the drone phase, it helps to see the behavior of said enemies. If they tend to stray from sight a bit, we need to keep that in mind. If you would like to enter the building in an area close to sight, you have to be more cautious. You're going to want to use your second drone, it's got a room or two ahead. An important aspect to keep in mind, defenders are not trees, they can move. If you check a room, it will momentarily be clear, but that can always change. You need to act on your drone's intel while it's fresh. Check the room you want to enter, maybe look down a hallway, look in the next room, then get in there. You will either know exactly where an opponent is and take the gunfight, or know that the area is clear. For example, when the enemy is in basement on canal, I take my drone phase drone into archives and place it on this shelf. When in the action phase, I take my second drone and check blind spots like behind the reception desk and hallway, quickly flick to my pre-placed drone and I can check this large area in like 3 seconds and confidently enter the building. It helps to go with the buddy if possible, and if your drone can accompany him, you can clear rooms more quickly and more confidently. When you want to enter far from sight, you more or less have to apply the same drone technique I just demonstrated. However, the farther from sight, the lesser the chance of an enemy encounter. The chance for a roamer may be low, but it's never zero. To make sure you don't attract unwanted attention, pay attention to noise levels. A barricade being completely destroyed is louder than a board being broken. If you want to be super sneaky, you can carve a hole like this in the footage presented and crouch through. With entering, you need to pay attention to the time. It's okay to sit outside for a bit to see if you can get a couple kills before you enter, but the defenders win if the clock hits zero and you need to get moving. If you're still outside when there's a minute 30 on the clock, you need to get a move on. When there's only a minute, you do actually need to get going. 
Whether the coast is clear or there is an enemy you need to take down, the next step is going to be taking that gunfight. If there is no enemy and you're inside, getting back on your drone could be a risk that you can't always take. Don't get me wrong, if you can, you should. But if you're feeling pressured or you think something's off, you may just need to keep your gun up as you proceed. When viewing other content creators, you may notice them having a seizure, I mean a quick peeking, which is a combination of leaning and strafing. I don't expect you to do this. It's a bit silly, and some people just seem to do it to show off sometimes, as it's flashy. Doing this gives a view of the room, but grants a very hard to hit target. Again, I don't expect you to need to do this. However, you should still do the beginner version occasionally, which is essentially just leaning in and strafing back and forth. In our other situation, we've encountered an enemy and need to take him down. You know where he is. One quick question, is it easier to hit a fast target or a slow target? The answer is a slow target. So while we have the advantage of knowing where the enemy is, we want a quick swing around the corner to take him out. Imagine it from the enemy perspective. They're watching the door they expect you to come from, and instead of slowly peeking the door, you move past their crosshair before they can react. As they have to readjust and you don't, you win that. If you can, pre-fire to get even more of an edge on your adversary. If you need to take someone out, then take them out. Have confidence and you will get this guy. A sad half-effort thing isn't always enough. Stop. There's something off. It's become practically a meme that your team is always worse than the enemy, and while that isn't always the case, it is here. Unfortunately for you, you've ended up in a 1v3. Fear not, it is time for our next lesson. Somewhat connected to the swinging I just taught you, we need to know when to get aggressive and when to get passive. This 1v3 you're in now is actually when to get aggressive. Let's lift the fog of war just for the sake of the example. You're in top square on bank, you killed the guy in CEO. Of the last enemies, one is over by marble, one is in banana, and the last is in cafeteria. Now that we have the big picture, let's shrink it a little to properly understand what to do next and bring back the fog of war of course. What do you see? The defender that was top marble is now by the vending machine and we know this because a teammate spotted him, the drone that you placed in prep phase. We swing him because it is temporarily a 1v1 until reinforcements arrive. If we wait, the defender in cafeteria will get your rear while the defender in banana pushes into lounge to put the final nail in the coffin. While we're in our mini 1v1, we act quickly to take that and now that we lift the fog of war again to see that the enemies have moved as we predicted, but we've narrowly dodged the jaws of death. Before we move on, it's important to point out the opposite situation. It's a 3v1. We have greater manpower than the enemy, so work in a group to get into sight and plant. If you have a buddy, you can afford to take your time. By this point, we've discussed picking an operator, droning, getting to the building and getting inside, taking gunfights and how to play depending on both enemy and team numbers. What we haven't gone over is the objective. Casual has other options like hostage and secure area, but they aren't in standard or ranked. I haven't been able to stomach casual since casual 2.0 launched back in heavy metal, and as such, we're just going to be focusing on bomb. As this isn't known for changing, this particular segment is more or less for new players. The bomb site takes up two rooms, and when planting the diffuser, it can be placed anywhere within the room, not just next to the bomb. It takes 7 seconds to plant. If the match timer hits zero while you are planting, it will let you continue until either you stop planting, in which you lose, or you finish planting and the round goes into overtime. Sites tend to have a default plant spot, which just tends to be the optimal spot to defuse for both cover and stopping defenders from destroying it. It's not required by law to place them in those spots, so place them wherever it's safe. One quick word of advice though, don't place on hatches. It takes a defender 7 seconds to defuse the diffuser, but if it's on a hatch, the hatch can be broken, sending the diffuser to a different floor and ending the round in a loss for the attack. A second quick word of advice. Some defenders will be able to scan you or the diffuser through walls, so if your homie is planting and just blows up. As funny as it is to watch, you need to take the diffuser and plant on top of something like a table. This way, they can't kill you from below. Just make sure site is cleared first, otherwise you'll be planting out in the open. When the diffuser is down, you simply need to hold for 45 seconds. You don't need to push it anymore, the defenders do. You can always find a spot to hide. When the enemy starts diffusing, listen, if we hear two or three louder zaps with some space in between,
the enemy is defusing. It's a common tactic to fake the defuse to get people to poke for a free kill. Don't fall for it. Unlike when planting, if the timer runs out while it's being defused, attackers will win anyway. You can die as long as you stalled the enemy long enough. That is more or less how to attack in Siege, but we missed something. What do you do when you die? This isn't a personal attack, you are going to die eventually. You probably won't have to wait long, especially if you're new. It's just part of the game. The number one thing to do is watch camps. This seems quite obvious, but even ranked people don't tend to do this until like Emerald if they don't know you. It's ironic because it greatly helps the team win. Soft ping enemies to help your team out. If you have a mic, then try to use callouts to help on top of that. You don't have to know every callout, you can always learn them over time. Please ping enemies though, it's very useful, and it's very easy. In casual or standard, there's no consequence for losing and it doesn't generally matter. Often people will go on their phones or watch memes when they're dead. Don't do this in ranked. If you decide to do it in standard or wherever, make sure you're spectating a player instead of a cam. Whoever's on a camera first gets to control it with the exception of alive people. If you're on the camera but not using it, your allies won't be able to look around or ping things. In this video, you learned about which operas make a good team composition, droning, getting both to the building and inside, how to take gunfights and when to be aggressive, how to plant the diffuser and what to do when dead. That's all for the guide. Defending is entirely its own beast, and a dedicated guide can come later. That's all I have for you today. Good luck, and I'll see you next time.